and good evening. Welcome. My name is Michiel van Dijk and I am the head of the UNODC Global Programme Against Money Laundering, Proceeds of Crime and the Financing of Terrorism and it is my pleasure to mod moderate this event. Today's event is being organized between my program and the UNODC Regional Office for Southern Africa in collaboration with the governments of South Africa and the United Kingdom, who are the co-sponsors of the event. Kindly note that we are uh, recording the event. Today, you will hear about the scale of illicit financial flows from the African continent. You will also hear about regional and national efforts to combat illicit financial flows and the important role that regional networks can play in this process. Combating illicit financial flows requires a multi-pronged approach involving both regional and national actors working in concert across various disciplines. UNODC has been providing technical assistance and training to member states for the past 23 years, including in the sub-Saharan Africa region and assisting member states to combat illicit financial flows is a priority, especially within the decade for action under the Sustainable Development Goals. Today, we have four distinguished, distinguished speakers, and they are, the first speaker would be, will be Ms. Khada Wali, the Executive Director of UNODC, followed by Mr. Hamada Al Sawi, Prosecutor General of Egypt, uh, speaking in his capacity as the President of the Africa Prosecutors Association. And then followed by Advocate Shamila Batohi, who is the National Director of Public Prosecutions from the National Prosecuting Authority of South Africa. And then last but not least, uh, Mr. Lee Turner, the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the United Kingdom. All four speakers will speak first, where after I will open the meeting for questions and answers. Uh, please use the raise hand function if you would like to ask a question. I kindly ask you to switch off your cameras and ensure that your microphones are muted if you are not speaking. Mr. Hamada Al Sawi will speak in Arabic and his office will provide consecutive interpretation. The interpreter has asked Kindly that all speakers speak at a pace that he can follow. Ms. Wally, Executive Director of UNODC, you have the floor, Madam. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for this important discussion on an urgent challenge facing the Sub-Saharan African region. Illicit financial flows are draining away vital revenues from Africa, undermining stability and hindering progress towards the Sustainable Development Goals. The Economic Development in Africa Report 2020 from our partners at UNCAD estimates that every year an estimated $88.6 billion, equivalent to 3.7% of Africa's GDP leaves the continent as illicit capital flight. Compare this with total annual inflows of official development assistance, valued at $48 billion on average, and yearly foreign direct investment at $54 billion. Total illicit capital flight from Africa from 2000 to 2015 amounted to some $836 billion. Given that F Africa's total external debt stock was $770 billion in 2018. This means that Africa is in fact a net creditor to the world. Africa's vast potential and resources can only translate into development dividends and into social and economic benefits for the people of Africa if money and assets go where they belong and are not siphoned off. This priority is recognized by the SDGs with reduction of illicit financial flows an explicit target under SDG 16 on peace, 
justice and strong institutions. As the 2015 MBK report has shown, illicit financial flows are aided and abated by crime and corruption. The General Assembly High Level Meeting on Illicit Financial Flows in May 2019 identified the UN Convention Against Corruption and the UN Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime as providing the most comprehensive and universal instruments to date <coughs> to reduce illicit financial flows originating from corruption and organized crime. This section, this session of the Conference of the Parties to the Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime is therefore a timely opportunity to discuss how our collective action can combat illicit financial flows more effectively. Regional networks bring practitioners together, building trust and enabling the sharing of expertise, tools and training thus providing a valuable means to address cross-border challenges like illicit financial flows. UNODC is proud to partner with South Africa's National Prosecuting Authority to act as the Secretariat of ARINSA, the Asset Recovery Interagency Network of Southern Africa. This informal network of practitioners from Eastern and Southern African countries has grown to 17 member states and represents an important conduit for assistance provided by UNODC in the areas of asset forfeiture, anti-money laundering, anti-corruption and countering terrorism financing and cybercrime. The region has built up and strengthened asset forfeiture regimes over the past decade. Thanks to the commitment of ARINSA countries and the generous support of partners like the UK. Allow me to take this opportunity to thank Ambassador Leigh Turner of the UK's for, for UK's commitment to continue funding our anti-money laundering work in Southern Africa. <coughs> Together, we have achieved concrete progress. Four years ago, Arenza countries reported a total of 355 money laundering investigations and seizure orders valued at $38 million. Now in the first nine months of 2020, 599 cases have been investigated and the value of seizure orders amounted to more than $700 million. Countries in the region have also channeled forfeited proceeds to fund specific development initiatives. In Kenya, authorities recently contributed some $19 million from forfeited funds to assist with COVID-19 relief. Last year, Namibia used funds to buy vehicles and IT tools for its law enforcement authorities. I commend the Arenza countries for these achievements, and I hope this side event will spark ideas for building on this progress. Going forward, we need to broaden engagement with national and regional actors, including by connecting existing networks to strengthen institutional support for the fight against illicit financial flows and to maximize impact. Key stakeholders include the African Union, OECD and FATFI, the African Development Bank, the sub-regional entities, the African Prosecutors Association and the G5 Sahel. UNODC stands ready to facilitate these efforts in collaboration with the World Bank and UNODC Stolen Assets Recovery Initiative, UNODC has supported the Asset Recovery Interagency Network for East Africa and West Africa, in addition to ARENZA.
Our office also supports the network of anti-corruption institutions in West Africa, the Eastern African Association of Anti-Corruption Authorities and the Pan-African Association of Anti-Corruption Authorities in Africa. Furthermore, UNODC is currently developing a strategic vision for Africa for the next 10 years. Through this comprehensive strategy, our office will scale up support to counter illicit financial flows and corruption, building on successes from African member states and addressing linkages with priority challenges, including terrorism, wildlife and forest crime, and other forms of transnational organized crime. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to conclude by thanking our side event partners, South Africa and the United Kingdom. I also much welcome, very much welcome, <clears throat> the participation of Mr. Hameda El Sawi, the Prosecutor General of Egypt, and Ms. Samir Chamila Batoti, National Director of Public Prosecutions of South Africa. And I congratulate both countries, Egypt and South Africa, <clears throat> for putting in place new and strengthened means of corruption and money laundering. Notably, under the leadership of Ms. Batohi, South Africa has established the Investigating Directorate in the Office of the National Director of Public Prosecution, and just this month announced charges in relation to a major corruption case. Egypt has created dedicated functions addressing economic crime and corruption, including a presidential as well as a cabinet advisor on corruption. In addition, Egypt will host of the Conference of the State Parties to the UN Convention Against Corruption in 2021, which will take forward the political declaration to be adopted at the first ever UN General Assembly Special Session Against Corruption, also taking place next year in June. UNODC is supporting preparations for the UNGAS and many African countries have been very actively engaged in this process, which will help to keep the fight against the illicit financial flows high on the international agenda. In this context, UNODC also contributed to the Secretary General's initiative on financing for development in the era of COVID-19 and beyond by elaborating policy options to tackle illicit financial flows and related vulnerabilities to address the current crisis, as well as long-term institutional strengthening and capacity building. <clears throat> we need all countries, our partners in Africa, as well as transit and destination countries to join this fight. Combating illicit financial flows is a shared responsibility and an essential step towards recovering better and protecting Africa's sustainable development and future promise. UNODC is your steadfast partner in these endeavors. I wish you all productive discussions. Thank you very much. Over to you, Mike. Thank you very much, uh, Executive Director Wally. Uh, for those inspirational words. And without further delay, I would now like to hand over the floor to Mr. Hamada Al Sawi. Uh, uh, sir, the floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sayyid al Dr. Ghada Wali, Nabi Lamin Al-Amil Al-Oman Muttahida. والمدير التنفيذي لمكتب الأمم المتحدة المعني بالمخدرات والجريمة سيد المستشارة شامل لباتوهي نائب عام دولة جنوب أفريقيا سيد السفير ليجا تينر السفير فوق العادة مملكة المتحدة البريطانية السيدة زوالدي أكشيفا رئيس المكتب الإقليمي لمكتب الأمم المتحدة المعني بالمخدرات والجريمة في الجنوب أفريقيا إنه لا يسعدني أن أرحب بكم في هذا اللقاء رفيع المستوى المتعلق بالتدفقات المالية غير المشروعة 
في منطقة جنوب الصحراء بالقارة الأفريقية ويشرفني أن أشارك فيه مع السيدة الفاضلة الدكتورة غادة والي المدير التنفيذي لمكتب الأمم المتحدة المعني بالمخدرات والجريمة. Your Excellencies, uh, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Gada Wali, Executive Director of the United Nations Office, UNODC, and the Director General of the United Nations Offices at Vienna, Under Secretary General of the uh, United Nations, Advocate Shamela Batuhi, National Director of the Public Prosecutors, Persecution of National Prosecuting Authority in South Africa, His Excellency, Lake Turner, Ambassador Extraordinary, Planning Potentially of United Kingdom in Austria, the head of United Kingdom Permanent Mission in Vienna, Ms. Zoladiz Akshiva, the regional representative in South Syria Africa, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to welcome you all at such a high-level meeting that deals with the illicit financial flow in Sub-Sahara Africa region. It is an honor to be a part at such event in the presence of Her Excellency Gada Wali, Executive Director of the United Nations Office on Drugs and, and Crime. كما أود أن أتقدم بالشكر والتقدير للجهود المبذولة من المكتب الإقليمي بجنوب أفريقيا التابع لمكتب الأمم المتحدة المعني بالمخدرات لدعمه أنشطة جمعية النواب العموم الأفارقة للعمل على مكافحة كافة الظواهر الإجرامية بقاراتنا الإفريقية والتي من أهم وسائل مكافحتها تنظيم مثل هذه المنتديات القارية التي تهدف إلى دراسة ملامح هذه الظواهر واسباب وجودها وكيفيه التصدي لها. And we'd like to extend our sincere gratitude and thanks to efforts made by the, by the UNODC for South Sahara Africa, the regional office of the UNODC in South Sahara Africa, to support the activities of the uh, African Prosecutor Association, APA, on combating all criminal phenomena in the African continent. To include the organization of such important regional meetings through which participating the participants discuss the features of this phenomena, its causes, framework, and the methods encountered. Excellencies, انتقال الأشخاص والأموال ورتبت نتائج غير محمودة منها. The transactional crime became a the transactional crime became a global phenomenon and its impacts have dramatically aggravated at global and local levels, especially under the globalization that speeded up and facilitated the movement of people and finance. Globalization resulted into the growth of this type of crimes and an increase in the number of organized criminal groups. With magnified transactional criminal activity. منها ازدهار هذا النوع من الجرائم ونمو أعداد الجماعات الإجرامية المنظمة وتضخم أنشطتها الإجرامية العابرة للحدود. Such as the growth of the types of crime and the increase in the number of the criminal groups and also the magnified activities of the transactional criminal procedures. ولقد استغل الجناح في تلك الجرائم التطور التكنولوجي في تطوير سلوكهم الإجرامي داخل هذه الجماعات فتخلوا عن الوسائل التقليدية واتخذوا من آليات التكنولوجيا الحديثة سبلا جديدة لتحقيق أغراضهم غير المشروع. New technology developments played a central role for organized criminal group, which exploited such developments for a least end and replaced the adapted traditional methods with more modern technology one. ولذلك كان من الضروري دراسة هذه المعطيات الجديدة وتغيير المعاملة القانونية في هذه الجرائم على نحو يفحتها والقضاء عليها وهو ما لا يحدث إلا بالتعاون. بين الدول المعنية. Thus, thus, it's must to change a legal confrontation for transactional crimes for effective control and compact. That would not, that wouldn't happen unless there is cooperation between the states concerned, not only at the level of the legislative bodies or law enforcement authorities, but as well authorities. ليس فقط تعاونا بين سلطات التشريع وإنفاذ القانون. ولكن بين العديد من أطراف المجتمع تحقيقاً للهدف الأسمى 
وهو القضاء على هذه الجماعات الإجرامية. Not only at the level of the legislative bodies or law enforcement authorities, as I said, but as well as the different authorities of the society in pursuit of the over overreaching, overreaching the goals that is that is elimination of such criminal groups. السيدات والسادة إن التعاون الدولي في في مجال مكافحة الجريمة المنظمة عبر الوطنية يعد ضرورة حتمية يفرضها الواقع الحالي الذي يشهد تزايد الأنشطة الإجرامية بين مختلف بلدان العالم وظهور خطر جرائم عبرت حدود الدول الإقليمية مثل جرائم الفساد وغسل الأموال وغسل الأموال وتهريب المخدرات عبر الحدود الدولية والإرهاب وتزايد خطر الإجرام المنظم بأشكاله المعاصرة مما يقتضي بين الدول لمواجهة هذه الظواهر العالمية. Ladies and gentlemen, the international cooperation in combating transnational organized crime is a must, especially under the rapid increase of the criminal activities in all the countries throughout the world and the emerging threats of transnational crime, such as crimes linked to corruption, money laundry, transnational drug smuggling, terrorism, and the increase of threat of organized crime is in a more modern forms. Thereupon, the cooperation among states is vital to combat such global phenomena. ويعد إبرام اتفاقيات التعاون القانوني والقضائي واتفاقيات تسليم المجرمين الثنائية أو متعددة الأطراف هو السبيل الرئيسي لتيسير سبل التعاون الدولي في المسائل الجنائية وتفعيل آلياته في ملاحقة مرتكبي شتى الجرائم بوجه عام والجرائم العابرة للأوطان بوجه خاص وتتبع الأموال غير المشروعة ومصادرتها واستردادها Concluding bilateral or multilateral legal and judicial cooperation and extradition agreements present a main way for facilitating the international cooperation in criminal matters. Also, implementing the mechanism of the, of the international cooperation for prosecuting the criminal in general and the criminals of transnational crime in particular, uh, in particular and, the, uh, and, the, and the criminals of transnational crimes uh, in particular, and the tracing and confiscation and recovery of illicit funds. كما أنه في حالة عدم إبرام مثل هذه المعاهدات سيظل مبدأ المعاملة بالمثل والمجاملة الدولية أساسيين للتعاون الدولي في المسائل الجنائية بما لا يتعارض مع السيادة الوطنية. So the principles of, recipro principles of reciprocity and international courtesy, even in the absence of bilateral or multilateral agreement, shall remain an essential foundation for achieving international cooperation in criminal matters without any prejudice to the state's national sovereignty. كما تمثل الشبكات الإقليمية والدولية المنشأة بين جهات الادعاء العام وجهات إنفاذ القانون أحد أهم الخطوات لتحقيق التعاون الدولي في المسائل الجنائية على نحو يسهل الوقوف على المتطلبات القانونية الموضوعية والإجرائية في الدول المختلفة ليتسنى للدول الطالبة للمساعدة القضائية تبادل المعلومات والخبرات على نطاق واسع تفعيلا للمواجهة الدولية الشاملة وتحقيقا للنجاح في مساعيها القضائية لجمع الأدلة أو تسليم المجرمين أو مصادرة استرداد الأموال غير المشروع. The creation of regional and international networks among prosecution services and law enforcement agencies present as well one of the most important steps towards stronger international cooperation in criminal matters. Such would such would facilitate the identification of both substance and procedural legal requirements due among the different countries so that the states requesting judicial assistance can exchange information and experience on large scale for a comprehensive confrontation to such a crime and to succeed in its judicial endeavors to obtain evidence or extradite criminals or confiscate and recover illicit proceeds. وفي هذا الإطار نستعرض الدور الإيجابي الهام الذي تلعبه جمعية النواب العموم الأفارقة لتعظيم الاستفادة من السقوق والمواثيق الدولية والإقليمية ذات الصلة بمنع الجريمة 
تعزيزا لدور اجهزه الادعاء والنيابه العامه والنيابات العامه في مكافحه كافه الظواهر الاجراميه بالقاره الافريقيه وتحقيقا للاستفاده القصوى من اليات التعاون الدولي في المسائل الجنائيه فيما بين جهات الادعاء داخل القاره Within this framework, it is a chance to have a quick review of the pivotal, pivotal role played by the African Prosecutor Association, especially in the terms of maximizing the use of international and regional instruments relevant to the crime prevention. In addition, strengthening the role of prosecution services and the prosecutors in combating all criminal phenomena in our African continent. And achieving the maximum benefit of the international cooperation mechanism in criminal matters among the different African prosecution offices. واستشير التقديرات إلى أن أفريقيا تخسر أكثر من خمسين مليار دولار سنويا نتيجة التدفقات المالية غير المشروعة بها، وهو ما يتجاوز بكثير مبلغ المساعدة الإنمائية الرسمية التي تتلقاها القارة. فإن خسارة هذا المبلغ المذهل تمثل الضرر الذي يقع على الأفراد وجدوى الأعمال التنمية والحكم في أفريقيا بأكملها. The report shows that it is estimated that Africa loses over 50 billion a year in illicit financial flow, far exceeding the amount of official development assistance the continent receives. The 50 billion is a, is in losses is staggering. Figure that represent damage to individuals and Africans, Africa's development and governance agenda as a whole. ولكن إذا تمكننا من وقف خسارة موارد إفريقيا من هذه التدفقات غير المشروعة، سيمكننا حين إذ توجيه هذه الأموال لتلبية احتياجات السكان في القارة وإتاحة الفرصة لهم لبناء مستقبل أفضل. So if we if we can stop losing Africa resources in illicit outflow, then these funds can be directed to meet the needs of the content people and allow them to build a far better future. استطلع النيابة العامة في دولنا بدور جوهري في مجال مكافحة الجريمة المنظمة ومصادرة الأموال غير المشروعة. حيث تعد الجهة المحورية التي تبذل الجانب الأكبر من جهود المكافحة باتخاذها الإجراءات القضائية في جمع الأدلة على ارتكاب الجريمة ونسبتها إلى مرتكبيها وإصدار أو استصدار الأوامر الخاصة بالتحفظ المؤقت على أموالهم التي يشتبه أنها متحصلة من هذه الجرائم كما أنها تحقق مع هؤلاء المتهمين وتحلهم إلى المحاكمات الجنائية إذا توفرت الأدلة الكافية لذلك. The prosecution offices in our states play a central role in combating organized crime and confiscating illicit funds as it represents a vital authority that is doing the most part of the confrontation as it taking judicial procedures to collect evidence and prove the crime against its perpetrators. The issuance or requesting the issuance of orders for temporary restraining of assets for the accused persons in this crime that are suspected to be the proceed of such crimes, in addition to investigation with the accused person and their referral to criminal trial if sufficient evidence are available. ولا تعمل النيابة العامة بمفردها في مجال مكافحة هذه الجرائم وتتبع الأموال غير المشروعة بل تعاونها. مع جهات أخرى لإنفاذ القانون استؤكد النيابة العامة المصرية أن نجاح هذه الإجراءات يتوقف على التنسيق الفعال والحقيقي بين كافة الجهات المعنية. However, the public prosecution office cannot act alone in combating these crimes and the trace of its illicit fund. It, work, it, it works in cooperation with other law enforcement agencies, achieving success which shall not have occurred unless there is effective and genuine coordination among all concerned parties. كما تؤكد أن مواجهة هذه الظواهر الإجرامية وملاحقة مرتكبيها وتتبع الأموال غير المشروعة النابعة عنها واتخاذ إجراءات مصادرتها كل ذلك يتطلب التدريب الدوري لأعضاء النيابة العامة وجهات إنفاذ القانون المعنية لمواكبة التطور المستمر لهذه الجرائم خاصة في مجال 
ضبط او تجميد او مصادره او استرداد الاموال المتحصله منها للوقوف على الاليات القانونيه والاجرائيه الحديثه الفعاله في هذا الشان. Here we should like to stress that for combating such criminal phenomena, effective prosecutions to offender and successful trace for illicit proceeds as well as rigid confiscation procedures require the organization of periodic training workshops designed for prosecutors and concerned law enforcement officers to cope with the continuing evolvement of these crimes, in particular with respect to the trace, freezing and confiscation of the seeds of the crime and the identification of re relevant modern legal and procedural mechanisms. وانطلاقا من هذا فقد تقدمت جمهورية مصر العربية بمشروع قرار يهدف إلى مكافحة الجرائم المنظمة عبر الوطنية المتعلقة بالممتلكات الثقافية والجرائم المرتبطة بها من خلال عقد اجتماع خبراء حكومي دولي مفتوح العضوية مرة واحدة على الأقل لتبادل الأراء بشأن الخبرات والممارسات الجيدة والتحديات فيما يتعلق بالجرائم المرتكبة ضد الممتلكات الثقافية والجرائم ذات الصلة وذلك في إطار تنفيذ اتفاقية الأمم المتحدة لمكافحة الجريمة المنظمة عبر الوطنية وذلك بغرض النظر في الخيارات واستكشافها وتقديم مقترحات بشأن الحاجة إلى وضع سق أو سقوق دولية جديدة وإنما التعاون وإنماء التعاون الدولي بكل أشكاله المختلفة وخاصة في تعقب وإعادة الممتلكات غير المشروعة والأصول والأموال المتحصلة عنها ليكون أداة دولية هامة لمكافحة هذه الجريمة للحفاظ على تراث الإنسانية. Based on the above mentioned, the Arab Republic of Egypt submitted a draft resolution to conference of the parties of the ONTOP aims at combating transnational organized crime against cultural property and the related crimes through convening at least one open-ended intergovernmental meeting of experts to exchange views on the participants' respective experiences, good practices, and the challenges they met in dealing with the crimes against cultural property and relevant crimes under the context of the implementation of the ONTOP Convention. With the aim to considering and exploring options and making proposal on the need to develop a new international instruments, strengthen stronger international cooperation in all its different forms, in particular in tracing and returning illicit assets and funds, to present an important international instrument in the combating against such a crime, ensuring the preservation of the human heritage. وختاما أود أن أعرب عن سعادتي بالمشاركة في, ها في, في هذه الفاعلية رفيعة المستوى وأؤكد لكم تطلعنا لمزيد من التعاون الفعال والتنسيق المستمر بين كافة أعضاء جمعية النواب العموم الأفارقة ولا يسعني إلا أن أشكر مكتب الأمم المتحدة المعني بالمخدرات والجريمة على الجهد المتضافر لتنظيم التدريبات وورش العمل المختلفة بالتنسيق مع جمعية النواب العموم الأفارقة والتي كانت آخرها ورشة العمل في جنوب أفريقيا خلال شهر فبراير الماضي وأدعوها لمزيد من الفاعليات المشتركة مع هيئات الإدعاء في القارة الإفريقية حتى تلقي الضوء على أهم سبل مكافحة الجريمة العابرة للأوطان وتبادل الخبرات والممارسات الفضلة في مجال تتبع ومصادرة الأموال غير المشروعة وإبراز مختلف سبل التعاون الدولي في المسائل الجنائية وصولا لتحقيق الأهداف التي تسعى إلى تحقيقها النيابة العامة وجهات إنفاذ القانون في دولنا من مكافحة الجريمة بكافة صورها ورد الأموال المنهوبة إلى مالكيها الشرعيين شكرا جزيلا لحضراتكم At the end, allow me to express my pleasure to be a part in such important high-level event assuring our ambition for more effective and ongoing cooperation and coordination among all members of the EPA, the African Persecution Association. Retreating sincere thanks to the UN ODC for concentrated efforts to organize various training and workshops in coordination with the 
ABA, the, la the last of which was the workshop held in South Africa last February. So I do call upon for more efficient cooperation and coordination with the different African prosecution services with the view of highlighting the most important ways for combating transactional crime, the exchange of experience and best practices in tracing and confiscation of illicit funds. Review, reviewing the various means of international cooperation in criminal matter to achieve the objective of the African prosecution offices and law enforcement agencies as well to combat crimes in all its forms and return looted funds to their legitimate owners. Dear all, thank you so much for your kind hearing. Thank you very much for your participation. Uh, we are running a little bit behind, so I will immediately hand over the floor to Advocate Shamila Batoi. Madam, you have the floor. Firstly, let me greet um, program facilitator. Um, let me also greet uh, the UNODC Executive Director, Ms. Wally, um, the Honorable Hamada El Sawi, the Prosecutor General of, of uh, Egypt. It's very nice to see you and your, your colleague again. Um, and uh, Ambassador Turner, um, I greet you all and other guests on the platform. I have been given five to seven minutes for this, uh, so I hope that I, I will try to stick within the time limits, given that we are running a bit over. Um, and I'll also try to be um, sufficiently slow so that the interpretation is good for my colleague. Um, firstly, let me thank the organizers for, for, for this really important session and for inviting the NPA to participate in this. Uh, we certainly hope that we would make some meaningful contribution. So uh, this was actually mentioned by, by, by Ms. Wally, um, but I want to emphasize this again. The UN Conference on Trade and Development in 2020 estimated losses of about $88.76 billion a year from Africa in what it calls illicit capital flight. As a percentage of GDP, um, illicit, illicit for financial flows in Africa are reportedly the highest in the world, with multinational corporations a lead contributor, undermining the effect of foreign direct investment and aid. Contrary to belief, a report from uh, the Global Financial Integrity, it's a, it's a combined report, uh, together with the Center for Applied Research at the Norwegian School of Economics and a team of economists around the world, last year found that developing nations were net creditors to the rest of the world, with the trade discrepancy largely driven by illicit financial flows and tax havens. It means that far more money flowed out of developing nations than into them. There is something fundamentally wrong with this picture. It has been estimated in South Africa that about a third of our GDP has been stolen to corruption alone. So this does not include other forms of organized crime, uh, terrorism, etc. And much of this, a large percentage, has left our shores. Our constitutional court has stated there can be no gain saying that corruption threatens to fell at the knees virtually everything we hold dear and precious in our hard-won constitutional order. The judges went on to say that when corruption and organized crime flourish, global development and economic growth are stunted, and in turn, the stability and security of society are put at risk. So what are we doing about combating illicit financial flows? Um, a coalition of institutions against IFF, um, including Tax Justice Network Africa, the Pan-African Lawyers Union, Global Financial Integrity, Trust Africa, and Civil Society Le Legislation Authority, recommended a set of actions African governments need to take in order to combat the chronic scourge that is shrinking African economies. In their paper, Accelerating the IFF Agenda for African Countries, the coalition suggested a list of 14 measures governments can take in the immediate term to catalyze their efforts to combat IFFs. 
These relate to creating governmental IFF policies, promoting financial transparency, uh, increase, increasing enforcement efforts and powers, tackling tax evasion and avoidance, and of course, preventing financial crime, which is hugely important. Because if we focus on the prevention, then of course, we don't need to invest in law enforcement and in all of these efforts to combat uh, illicit financial flows. So in South Africa, you know, we, we've come through a really difficult time, um, you know, in the, in the past years. And, and we've taken now several, uh, over, the, over a couple of years, several measures to combat the scourge of illicit financial flows at both domestic and international levels. There's a new multilateral agreement called the Automatic Exchange of Financial Institu uh, sorry, Information, which allows authorities to exchange information on offshore accounts. We've also signed other agreements uh, relating to provide tax administrations with necessary information um, on, on to, so that they can do high risk assessments. Uh, you know, we've also had the Financial Intelligence Center Act in, uh, put in place. Uh, all of this assists in, in addressing these issues. Um, the Financial Intelligence Center, um, which was set up as a result, spearheaded in South Africa the creation of a coordinating forum for illicit financial flows specifically, and it's called the Interagency Working Group on the IFFs. Um, the Asset Forfeiture Unit, which is part of the National Prosecuting Authority of South Africa, also serves on this interagency working group with other role players um, within the law enforcement space, including the, our revenue service, the Reserve Bank, um, the police, uh, South African Police Service. And they are specifically tasked with identifying and fast tracking matters involving illicit financial flows. Um, this group has identified a number of challenges that need to be addressed in order for us to be more efficient at combating this absolute scourge. So the first thing is having a whole of government approach. And, and it's really important to do this when trying to understand the phenomenon to identify develop a holistic strategy to combat this phenomenon. And in South Africa, we are we are have a, have a just put together a group together with the executive various arms of government to look at a multi pronged approach to how we could bring back the money that has left the shores of South Africa. And I'll say a little bit about that later. Um, it has to be intelligence. The, cha the, the another challenge is intelligence driven. Um, it, these investigations have to be driven by good intelligence. You know, the, the illegal remittal or smuggling of monies across borders is taking place in a highly organized manner. We all know that. And these syndicates are, are notoriously difficult to penetrate. And therefore, having really good intelligence is, is almost a sine qua non to be able to deal with this efficiently. Uh, detection, the detection is, is another major challenge that has been identified. Um, whilst, you know, we have things like compulsory reporting of suspicious transactions, and there's been and there's very good cooperation with the banks and other financial institutions, which has gone a long way towards addressing this. Or I should say it's gone some way to addressing this. It's a major challenge. Um, also, the detection of smuggling of cash across borders is, you know, presents entirely different and unique challenges uh, relating to detection. Corruption within within the various agencies and ports of entry does not help, and this needs to be rooted out. Um, in, in recent weeks, we had the arrest of 17 police officers at the OR Tambo International Airport in Johannesburg um, because of, of corruption related activities. And so, you know, part of all of this integrity training, all really crucial. Um, I'm acutely aware of time, but so I'm going to try to go through this quickly. Um, you know, addressing uh, illicit financial flows, it, it, I mean, it, to state the obvious, it requires cooperation at regional and global levels. And, you know, we need regional cooperation to counter the lack of resources and capabilities to dedicate um, to curbing illicit financial flows. And therefore, I must really commend the, the efforts of, of the um, ARINSA Network, Asset Recovery Interagency Network for Southern Africa, which over the years has provided a platform. South Africa is the um, secretariat and 
working together with our col our partners in Africa, it has provided a platform for professional networking and law in amongst law enforcement and justice practitioners in the region. And I really want to thank the UK government, UNODC, for the continuous support to the NPA of South Africa, as well as to the Arinsa network. And we certainly want to strengthen this relationship to make sure that as as, as an interagency network, we can be really more effective. And South Africa will certainly commit to that. Um, and, and, you know, the, the Western African network is also recognized, and it's good to see that this is actually spreading. Um, you know, regional support has got to be supported by global cooperation. We need support on extradition, mutual legal assistance. And, you know, th this is crucial. Um, as I mentioned, South Africa has lost a sig an insane amount of money to corruption. And if you add organized crime to that, it is a staggering amount, one third of the GDP. Money destined to uplift the most, to uplift the most vulnerable, the poorest of the communities in South Africa has left the country. Monies that would have been used to provide basic infrastructure, water, sanitizing, sanitization, accommodation, schools. And this is not just unique to South Africa, but this is what we have really experienced in the past couple of years. Um, it has been so devastating that the government has set up the com a commission of inquiry into what is referred to as state capture in South Africa. And it has been hearing testimony daily of wide scale looting of our state coffers by unscrupulous individuals in both the pri private and the public sectors. And so now there's a there's a real hunger in South Africa for prosecutions, for accountability and to ensure that we also bring back the money. The fact that key institutions like the NPA, like the police, have been hollowed out in recent times has made the challenge even more daunting. However, there is hope and the change of administration in our country gives us hope that we are on a trajectory of reclaiming our country from the clutches of state capture and that there is a commitment, there is a political will to support the efforts to hold people, to hold those most responsible uh, accountable. So recovering the money is, is by way of asset forfeiture is a big part of the strategy. And so we need to work collectively with, with countries. Challenges that we've had to, we've been engaging with a couple of countries and the, the efforts, our efforts to secure assistance from some countries has been an absolute nightmare to say the least. And there are whole, there's, you know, there's issues that come up, differences in legislation, um, lack of transparency, um, you know, we have delays in replying to requests and even a lack of political will. And, and so, you know, it is it's really how can how can we hope to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals to end poverty and hunger, to combat inequalities, to build peaceful, just and inclusive societies if our money is enriching individuals and supporting economies of other countries? We need stronger cooperation from developed countries when 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 we deal with asset recovery and we hope that this important issue will be discussed at the current conference of parties to the UN convention against transnational organized crime and that they will come up with different assistance programs to support um, areas of fund repatri repatriation um, you know we cannot really over underestimate the importance of rebuilding african economies post covid and so i really hope that there will be measures that will allow us to, to really put pressure on countries and force countries to collaborate and to repatriate monies. So I really look forward to, to the further engagement and I'm sorry that I've been a little bit of rushed, but thank you very much. Thank you thank very you much, much, Advocate Batoui, uh, for your, your message. And uh, I think it links up very well with uh, the discussion uh, and the presentation by uh, uh, Mr. Al um, you know, two messages that come out clearly to me is that international cooperation is key. Uh, I take your message that at this COP that's ongoing as we speak, uh, this should feature on the agenda. So from our side within the organization, as you heard, we have the backing from our executive director and we can make things happen. Uh, without further delay and last but not least, uh, your excellency, uh, Mr. Lee Turner, uh, sir, you have the floor. Great. Well, very much thanks to you, Jacko, and thanks to this uh, really uh, expert, distinguished and uh, high-powered panel. Um, 
It's a hugely important topic, and uh, it's striking that we have uh, more than 120 people um, signed up online. Never seen that many people in a side event uh, in the flesh, I must say. So that's great to have you all here. I mean, I'm going to talk today about why the UK sees it as being essential that we have, as all three speakers have already made absolutely clear, international cooperation on this vital subject. And then secondly, I'm going to talk briefly about what the United Kingdom is doing. And I should just underline at the beginning that we see the NODC as being an essential partner in pursuing this work to track down dirty money around the world. We all know how to beat serious and organized crime. We have to follow the money. There's a movie about it. Put simply, illicit financing enables every other sort of organized crime. It exacerbates the damage caused by corruption. It entrenches the power of elites and it diverts resources intended for development, service delivery and growth. As Executive Director Wiley has mentioned, the size of these illicit financial flows, actually all three speakers have mentioned it, are enormous, um, exceeding FDI, exceeding development aid. Even in the UK, we are facing costs of serious and organised crime of over £37 billion a year, and it kills more people in the UK than all other national security threats combined. Most of the organised crime groups operating in the UK have links overseas. Simply put, this dirty money is a problem of global proportions, and as such, it's a classic issue that requires a coordinated global response. And that is, that is where UNODC is so important. And as Kofi Annan said in his foreword to the UN's Transnational Organised Crime Convention, if crime crosses borders, so must law enforcement. If the rule of law is undermined not only in one country, but in many, said Kofi Annan, then those that defend it cannot limit themselves national means. And of course, the COVID-19 pandemic has simply made everything worse with a wave of corruption around relief funds and public procurement. And the United Kingdom has been active in trying to respond to this, establishing a COVID-19 fraud watch group. And we're aware of initiatives in many other countries, including Nigeria's strengthening of their federal audit board, work in Sierra Leone to set up a coronavirus disease response transparency task force, and of course, South Africa's own new efforts on grand corruption. All of these examples show the necessity, the importance and the urgency of global system reform to manage and to curb non-compliance in both public and private sectors. The UK is delighted to hear that countering illicit financial flows will feature signif significantly in UNODC's vision for Africa. We welcome the UNODC's holistic approach, as outlined by Executive Director Wally, that will feature in the Africa vision. And we agree, very important, to address the linkages between illicit finance and other priority challenges, such as serious organized crime, wildlife and forest crime, drug trafficking, and of course, people trafficking. They all come together through illicit finance. We also welcome the executive director's call to broaden engagement and to ensure no safe harbor for dirty money. I should have perhaps mention to the other speakers that we also agree with the point by Hamada El Sawi that international cooperation is key. We must harness technological advances to tackle serious organized crime. And with Ms. Batoy's point about the importance of intelligence-led action, the UK is and will remain a strong supporter of multilateral efforts to achieve the UN Sustainable Develop Development Goal 16.4 by 2030, 
and we're delighted to see the UNODC driving this agenda. Let me just turn to one or two areas where the UK is working on illicit finance and economic crime. We have the new UK Economic Crime Plan, which sets out the basics for our work. This includes through maintaining and strengthening international standards and conventions and making sure that they're implemented and by supporting sustainable development by strengthening resilience to economic crime and illicit finance. In practice, this means cooperating internationally, providing capacity building to as many countries as we can help with worldwide and working on both prevention and recovery. We have a new kind of secret weapon with all this, so it's not so secret, which is that we have combined uh, the Foreign Office and what, what was the Department for International Development in our new Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office, which brings together both diplomatic policy and deep development expertise. I'll just give you a few examples of what we're doing, like because I'm mindful of the time. Um, the UK funds a network of combating illicit finance in global financial centres, including in Nairobi, in Mauritius and in Dubai. Secondly, the UK's National Crime Agency deploys expertise to help address illicit finance in partnership with other countries, such as South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria and Ghana. Thirdly, we use a public-private partnership approach, for example, by setting up Joint Money Laundering Intelligence Task Force and we work with other countries to set up similar models. This is important to share information on money laundering risks and to close loopholes. A further area is through the provision of mentoring, training, technical and analytical support to justice professionals, including in African countries. We also work to foster financial intelligence journalism and key initiatives such as beneficial ownership registers. We've already heard references to the specific um, project that the UK is supporting through funding to the UNODC of the Asset Recovery Interagency Network for Southern Africa, ARINSA, which is a terrific regional network of investigators and partners. We think this is a, a really super initiative in providing support to it since 2015, and we're delighted to be working with UNODC and 17 African countries on what really seems to be producing great results. Uh, amongst other things, we've seen that the ARINSA Secretariat has been strengthened and has been achieving improvements in capability through training, with many ARINSA investigators and prosecutors becoming trainers to their peers. There's been cooperation within the ARINSA network, and since 2015, astonishing and encouraging figures, the growing skills and capabilities of ARINSA have led to their seizures of criminal proce proceeds increasing from $23 million in 2015 to over $4 billion in the latest figures. So this is really showing what potential ARINSA can have. Looking ahead, we want to continue to build on these successes. What's our goal? Try and stay ahead of the criminals. That's going to need long-term strategic planning and strong policy and legislative frameworks. To summarise, we look forward to continuing to work with our partners across Africa and, of course, UNODC on this vital work, and we encourage others to join us. Only by working together can we follow the money and make sure, to coin a phrase, that crime doesn't pay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, uh, for, uh, for, your, for your presentation. Um, I think the message I also get in addition to international cooperation is that fighting and combating illicit financial flows required, requires a collective effort and uh, it's encouraging to note that this is very high on the agenda of the UK as well. And uh, uh, my sincere thank you to the UK for
providing the funding to our INSA since 2015. Without your support, this would not have been possible to show the results that we are showing. Um, next, uh, I would like to open the floor to questions. Um, as mentioned earlier, please use the raise hand function to indicate that you would like to ask a question. And uh, once I give you the floor, kindly introduce yourself. Please indicate which government agency or organization you represent and to whom you are addressing the question. Anybody who wants to raise a question, please uh, use the hand function. Mahuli and Nana Atra Soel. His Excellency, uh, Councillor Hamada Saul, the Secretary General, would like to ask a question. Yes, please go ahead. يمكن هي أنا أقصد بالمداخلة ليس سؤال قد ما هو إقرار إن إحنا جميعا متفقين في النقاط الأساسية وهي ضرورة التعاون الفعال في مكافحة الجرائم الخاصة بغسل الأموال وجرائم الفساد خاصة وإن هذا التعاون سيمنع وقوع هذه الجرائم ولا يكون تعاون رد فعل بعد وقوع الجريمة فنتفق جميعا إن إحنا نكون متعاونين على وجود سبل لمكافحة هذه النوعية من الجرائم كما تحدثت وتحدث السادة الحضور جميعا على نفس هذه النقاط فأرجو أن تكون هناك أليات سريعة على هذا التعاون حتى يمكن مكافحة الجريمة شكرا لحضرتك uh, actually, it's not a question, but it's, it's just a comment from me after I heard all these precious interventions from the speakers. Uh, I would like to mention that there is an importance for effective cooperation between the, uh, between the par uh, concerned parties. Uh, the, this effective cooperation will allow us to confront these kind of crimes and confront the illicit uh, proceeds of the crime. Uh, so I, I, I call upon to have uh, strengthen the means how to cooperate smoothly between the concerned parties and to uh, to support the endeavors that deals of maintaining networks of uh, uh, effective cooperation between the between the law enforcement agencies to deal with this uh, or to deal with this such kind of phenomena. So without effective cooperation. We cannot achieve our goals. And the last, and at the end, I would like to mention that that uh, uh, confronting the crime uh, it will not will not achieve will not be, will not uh, achieve the success unless there is an effective cooperation between the law enforcement agencies. Thank you very much. Uh, very very important points that you made there, uh, Your Excellency. Um, Yes, in our delivery of technical assistance and building capacity building in member states, uh, I think one of the key messages we always have is that interagency co collaboration and cooperation is key. It's not only one entity within a country. For example, when you look at uh, issues of money laundering, it's not only the financial intelligence unit that drives the agenda, but it is a collective effort between uh, law enforcement, the FIU, the prosecutors, um, and the judiciary, the other judiciary, the judges, the magistrates that um, uh, leads to a, an, an effective system. And one of the good things is that today, when we look at the international standards on money laundering, we've also moved away from only looking at technical uh, technical compliance. We also now address this effectiveness, and countries are rated on that. The role of the UNODC is to uh, partner with those countries and help you provide technical assistance uh, in that regard. Uh, if any of the other speakers would like to take the floor on this, um, please uh, let me know. Is that fine? Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Any any more questions? Uh, I have a question for the UK. Um, uh, we've heard about the successes of uh, Arinsa and the the funding that's been uh, confiscated. Um, now, the investment that the UK made, um, you know, by funding the network, uh, can you see value for money in this? Yeah, certainly we can. Um, I might just start off by saying that uh, we've been supporting this uh, since 2015 and we've found that it's a great way to get end-to-end -end solutions to the problems that we face. I think uh, I might invite my colleague uh, from the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, Nicole Nicola Noyce, who is based in South Africa, to come in on this. I see she has her... So um, could I invite you, Nicola, to chip in? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Sorry, I'm putting the camera on as well. Thank you. Yes, I mean, we definitely see that as money, um, value for money. I think our investment um, has been about £600,000 um, in a year, and then the, the returns are just immeasurable, really. Um, sorry, it varies slightly from year to year, but I mean, the return is... Um, multiple times what we basically fund um, or what we provide in funding to the Arinsa network. That's excellent value for money. Um, I think one thing that always helps us in, um, in also um, sort of um, promoting the program and getting sign-offs and approvals from our ministers is when we can then also show the successes um, and especially the links between what we have invested and how that has led to the successes um, further further on. So it's a combination of the training and then um, also our sort of political and high level engagement um, and um, fostering the regional cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicola. I mean, I, I just I just support that very strongly and say thank you, Nicola, that um, you know UK ministers are always keen to see that any of our projects in whatever area are actually producing results. And in the case of Arinsa, clearly there are very important results being achieved. Thank you. And uh, yes, it, 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 uh, when you make a case for new funding, it obviously makes, makes it easier when you show impact. <laughs> so thank you for your support. Um, there is a hand raised by Magagula Malindane. Uh, Magagula, can you please ask your question? And uh, please indicate to whom you address it, and please indicate from which uh, uh, government or organization you are. Oh, thank you so much, Your Excellency. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, I'm from the Eswatini Revenue Authority. It's a tax authority in, in the Kingdom of Eswatini, uh, formerly Swaziland. My, my question is uh, addressed to His Excellency Lei Tena from UK. Yeah. Your Excellency, I, I heard you talking about uh, uh, the, the UK economic crime plan. You know, uh, I understand that uh, UK is one of, I mean, it's the, it's the first world country, and I am from a uh, least developed country in Africa, Eswatini. Uh, it's been His Majesty's vision, that is the King of Swaziland, to, you know, to, 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 to shift Swaziland towards uh, uh, being a first world country. So I believe that uh, the UK economic crime plan, you know, can come in handy for least developed countries to actually take leave and see, because uh, I understand perhaps maybe UK is actually uh, demarcated, uh, you know, and identify those uh, economic crimes. So the least developed countries can, you know, take leave and see what are those uh, uh, crimes, you know, economic crime. So my question is how accessible can is it easily accessible like the the the, the, the economic plan or is just a, a, do, a domestic plan for uk can it be accessed by uh, maybe countries like my country in in the kingdom of Eswatini? thank you so much yes thank you very much for that question and uh, strangely enough i actually i uh, went to school in eswatini many years ago in 1969 to 1970 oh, at great, waterford camp club camp Klaba. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So, yeah, I wondered if I could invite um, Nicola to comment on that in a moment. But uh, my main point is that this is a publicly available law. So it certainly is something which is available. And we would be uh, very keen to try and share that with you. I don't know, Nicola, if there's anything you'd like to add to that. Uh, yeah, it's on the uk.gov website. Um, I can send the link round. And um, I think one of the key points in that economic crime plan is that it's really important um, to have that international cooperation, but then also the cooperation across the sectors. Um, so it's both um, on, in the public sector as well as in the private sector. And that partnership is extremely important to tackle the, um, the financial risks. Thank you. Can I just mention that Nick, one of our guests, actually uh, in the chat uh, section, uh, shared the link to this uh, this uh, economic crime plan. So, um, Magagula, you can you can if you access the chat, you will have the link there. Oh, thank you so much, Excellence. Thanks. Right. Okay. Um, we have another hand up. Uh, I do realize we are over time. So uh, Edwin Ntonga, I'll give you the floor and um, and then we will we will wrap up the session. Edwin, please uh, ask your question. You have the floor. Oh, thank you very much. Um, actually, it's not a question, it's a comment. I don't know if your comments are also invited. It's just uh, the questions. Comments are also invited, Edwin. Go ahead, please. Oh. Thank you very much. I just would like to speak to uh, the usefulness of um, the Arinsa network, especially in my country in Malawi. I'm from the Financial Intelligence Authority in Malawi, which is an FIU. Malawi is FIU. So I'm one of the, the, the beneficiaries of uh, the various trainings uh, that uh, Arinsa has been giving. For, for instance, uh, I took part in the prosecutor placement program and I also did the civil advocacy training. And um, I must say it's been quite useful for us because for uh, civil asset forfeiture in Malawi, it's, it's something new. Uh, we've just introduced it in 2017. And already there's uh, a case that we have successfully recorded for civil asset forfeiture in Malawi uh, about uh, a month ago. And um, it's all thanks to the, the training that uh, myself and other uh, prosecutors and other uh, lawyers and investigators have been getting through the Arinsa network. So I just would like to uh, commend uh, UNODC, Arinsa, and uh, uh, the British government in the efforts that uh, are bringing in Southern African region, especially through the Arinsa network. It's been quite useful. Uh, investigators uh, and the, uh, analysts in the FIUs have been able to um, to, to get knowledge and uh, advance in the, their, their, their efforts to fight financial crime in Malawi. So I just wanted to, to, to make this comment that it's, uh, it's really being helpful and uh, we're really seeing the fruits. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for that intervention, uh, Edwin. Um, with that, I would like to uh, conclude our session. Uh, I want to thank uh, all of the speakers. Uh, thank you very much for being available today. Really appreciate uh, the strong messages and the encouragement that were in those messages. And um, we look forward to working with you and taking this important work forward. Um, and then on behalf of our executive director, uh, Ms. Wally, unfortunately she had to leave uh, at uh, 3.30 because she had a, another engagement. Uh, as you can imagine, the, during this period, she was very busy. So um, also on her behalf, I want to thank you. Uh, stay safe and uh, take care, everyone. And thank you. Great. Thank, thank you, you very, very much for the great chairing and thanks to all the other participants. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Shukran. Shukran. Thank you. Shukran. Thank you. Shukran. Thank you. Shukran. Thank you. Shukran.